Hello, uh, welcome back to another video. For this video we're going to show uh, an example of using the probability generating function. So again, probability generating function example. It's the topic for tonight's video. This is following on from the, the uh, video I made for showing the basics of the probability generating function and how its derivatives relate to the moments of a discrete random variable but are not exactly equal to the moments after the first derivative. All right, so for the uh, example we're going to look at today, we're going to look at the case of using the probability generating function with a Poisson distribution. So again, our Poisson distribution This is where my PMF, f of k for k, is equal to alpha to the k over k factorial e to the minus alpha for non-negative values of k, and it's 0 if k is less than 0. So we're going to begin from the definition of the generating function. So that's g k of z is the sum as k goes from minus infinity to plus infinity of z to the k f k of k. And we can immediately simplify this since all the negative values of k have a PMF of 0. So I can say this is the sum as k goes from 0 to infinity of z to the k. And now I'm going to plug in the terms from above. So I have alpha to the k over k factorial e to the minus alpha. So that's my generating function. Now I want to regroup some terms to clean it up. This e to the minus alpha can move out front because it doesn't care about the, uh, the, the sum over k, right? It's not a function of k. And so when I'm done simplifying this, I can get an e to the minus alpha out front here. And I can group the other terms, and I can look up here and say, well, I've got, I just sort of use my pointer here, I've got this term here is z to the k and alpha to the k. I can combine those both in terms of a power to the k. So I can say this is z times alpha to the k over k factorial. And at this point, the, the key to, to getting this in closed form is to recognize that this whole thing here May sort of, maybe I'll outline it in blue. This whole sum in this form is the Taylor series for an exponential of the form, whatever's in the brackets here. Z to, in this case, z to the alpha is the exponent. So if I move on uh, to the next page, I, I can, well, let me write that up for it. Let me write, just said, let me write it. So this part here is equal to the Taylor series for e to the z alpha. So if I use that as I go to the next page and to simplify things. I'll get that my moment generating function g k of z is now e to the minus alpha times alpha e to the alpha z or I could rewrite this as e to the alpha times z minus 1. So that is my probability generating function for a discrete random variable. If I want to find the moments of the Poisson distribution, well, I could probably go look them up on the web, but just to, to show how we would use this to say, well, I take the derivative of this and evaluate it at z equals 1 to get the expected value of this distribution. So if I did that, in this case, that would be equal to Let's see, well, and a derivative, I have a derivative of an exponential. They use the same thing. So I have e to the alpha z minus 1. But then by chain rule, I take the derivative of everything in the exponent with respect to z. So I get this thing. I get an alpha down in front. Evaluating at z equals 1, if I put z equals 1 in up this, this becomes 0. So e to the 0 becomes 1. So when that's all done, what I'm left with here is alpha times e to the 0, which is alpha. So the first moment of a Poisson distribution is, is in fact the parameter of the Poisson distribution. In fact, that's the only 
tree parameter. If I tell you the mean of a Poisson distribution, I've completely determined the Poisson as it's given in this form. If I wanted to find the variance, I could go on, though, and take another derivative. So to find the variance, I take the second derivative with respect to z, because I'm going to need that to get the first moment. I'm sorry, the second moment. If I take the second derivative and evaluate it z equals 1, I get the second moment minus the mean. But I already know the mean, so I can add that back in to fix things. So if I take the second derivative of what I have up here, right, the second derivative means I'm going to take d dz of alpha times e to the alpha z minus 1. And so when I take another derivative, well, this part, again, still remains the same. I have e to the alpha z minus 1. This becomes alpha squared. And so evaluating this at z equals 1, again, this exponent up here, I'll circle it in blue, this becomes 0, so this all becomes 1. And when I'm done, I'm end up, I end up with alpha squared e to the 0. So alpha squared, but this is equal to what I had up here, right? Equal to these terms here. So I need to solve this in the other direction. Let me make a new page before I go too far down. Solving this in the other direction, I'm, I'm going to say if I want to find the second moment, I'm going to get e to the k squared. That's the second derivative of g with respect to z, evaluated at z equals 1, plus the expected value. All right, so in this case, I've got alpha squared, was what I just found for that, plus alpha. Now, if I wanted to find the variance of k, I'd say, well, I know the variance of k is the second moment. The easiest way to find it from here is the second moment minus the first moment squared. So I've just found the second moment is alpha squared plus alpha. The first moment was alpha, and I square it. So in this case, the Poisson distribution has the variance equal to the mean, which is alpha. And you can check that to verify that. So altogether, this, show, this gives an example of applying the probability generating function for discrete random variables by taking what's effectively the z-transform, though the exponent has a different sign from what we usually use in electrical engineering, and then showing how you take uh, derivatives to find the first and second moment with some, some work to compensate for the mean here. Just flash on to my, uh, here my credits. And uh, thank you very much, and I hope that clarifies some of your questions about the probability generating function.